folks and the young at heart. Wild West City welcomes you to the best of the West in the heart of the East. Wild West City of Metcom, New Jersey. A monument to our American heritage, Wild West City takes you back in time to the days of the Western frontier and the heyday of the cowboy. Our city government has tried to recreate a cow town in the Old West. And you'll find many authentic items of Americana in the museum and other buildings. Our city is complete with a stagecoach line and a railhead. And you can take a ride to somewhere every 10 minutes or go by pony. There, you hear that fanfare? That's going to indicate it's time for a dramatization taken from the pages of the history of the West. Our stage is a city street, so when you hear this fanfare... Stand back of the engine rails and up on the porches and follow the directions of this announcer. Then all shows will hit the trail of schedule, so what do you say? Let's try it.
over and over this moment of meeting the fastest gun in the West. From a time early in life when hatred chose his destiny, every effort led to this moment. As the stranger passes the marshal's office, he reigns in rightly. The marshal has stepped from the porch and stands by a hitching rail, returning the stranger's gaze with one of contempt. With a devil's grin, the stranger rides on. He ties up his horse at the Silver Dollar Saloon. Stepping out into the street, he flexes his fingers, stiffens with confidence, and facing the marshal's office, he begins his walk of death. His walk displays the pride of an artist. The marshal has known that someday this kid would ride into town. They all do. And so the marshal, a veteran of many such encounters, once again steps out to be a gunslinger. As the stranger walks slowly, a following step betrays a speck of doubt. The stranger sees on the face of the lawman the look he believes the lawman sees upon the stranger. The look of the unbeatable foe. The gunslinger drops his hands and fires. In haste, he drew and fired and missed. And the sound of the accurate shot fired by the marshal overrode his own, and the bullet tore his life away. The gunslinger and the lawman. on the main street of Wild West City with cowboy competition. While the cowboys are putting the finishing touches on their horses, I'll tell you a little bit about cowboy competition. It's a horse race amongst the cowboys. This is the time of day that lets each cowboy let off a little bit of steam to show who is the best rider and, of course, who has the fastest horse. Outside of just being any other horse race, it is also a hat race. What I'll do is I'll introduce each rider and their horse. They'll come up here to the top of the town by the Golden Nugget Saloon. After the introductions, they'll deposit their hats on the pole stand, make any last minute adjustments to their saddles if necessary, and then head down to the stagecoach loading dock where that will be the start and finish of today's race. At the start of the race, they'll bolt up here to the top of town, retrieve their hats cleanly from the pole stand, then dash back down the street to the finish line where the first cowboy to cross the finish line with their hat on their head will be the winner of today's cowboy competition. If any of the cowboys knock over the pole stand, while circling to get their hats, or goes around both pole stands, they will automatically be disqualified from the race. Now, ladies and gentlemen, cowpokes and cowgirls, what have we? At all times during the course race, Kindly stay back behind the hitching rails. These horses do not stop like a car, so please, for your own safety, stay back behind the hitching rails during this horse race, especially during this horse race and any other act on the main street of Wild West City today. The fanfare at the beginning of the act tells you the show is about ready to start, and the fanfare at the end of the act tells you to go about your business. Now let's bring these riders up. In that number one slot today will be a cowboy by the name of Kyle Schnellbacher. Kyle will be riding a horse by the name of Ace. 
Kyle has been a cowboy competition competitor for about the last four seasons. Compiled quite a good record. Pretty good horseman up there. Ace here is uh, relatively new to the stables. Uh, as you saw, Kyle was actually working the turn with him before we make these introductions. So Ace is going to see how he makes out here in this race. That'll be the combination of Kyle Schnellbacher and Ace. All right, in that number two slot, Cowboy competition competitor for about the last three years will be Gavin Thompson. Gavin is aboard a feisty mount by the name of Abilene. Abilene has been racing her first year, and she's actually done very, very well. Gavin has also been a good, strong competitor through the years. He's compiled himself a good win-loss record. In actuality, this should be quite an interesting race with Kyle and Gavin. All right, looks like the boys are about ready. Hats are on the stands. All right, they're going to make their way on down to the start finish line. Of course, uh, good sportsmanship here. Good shake of the hands as they went down. Looks like uh, our... Eddie Johnson down there from the chuck wagon. Looks like he might be our start finish line guy. Yep, I got a tip of the hat there. All right, the boys are making their way down. As they get closer, they will get to that starting line. They will both raise their hands. That will indicate they are ready to go. Uh, once Eddie gives them the start signal, they will be on their way uptown here for the race. So, folks, who's it going to be? Gavin Thompson on... Abilene on the general store side of the street, or will it be Kyle Schnellbacher and Ace on the Silver Dollar Saloon slot side of the street? <laughs> looks like they're ready, and it looks like we got ourselves a horse race. Uh, Kyle's got a little bit of head, uh, maybe a little lead. This is where it's going to get very tricky. Ace has got to be take. Whoa! Good turns by both horses, and they're both off. It is now a horse race. Kyle looks like he's got a bit of a lead. Kyle's hat's got to be on his head, and Kyle Schnellbacher looks like he just nosed about at the end there. That was quite a race, quite a race. Good ride by both riders, boy. All right, let's bring those riders up here. Let's bring up the winner, Kyle Schnellbacher aboard Ace, number one, and Gavin Thompson aboard Abilene, number two. Let's give these boys a round of applause, folks. They both very well deserve it. Right, folks, don't go away. Coming up next in about five minutes will be Elmer the Easterner. Watch as and see as this dude from the East saunters right into the heart of the West. It'll be Elmer the Easterner coming up next. Just then, two of the meanest looking wombats came out of the saloon. They had this poor woman by the arms and she was turning from one to the other, talking and screaming. They finally let her go. One of them said, Make up your mind by tonight. We waited long enough. She put her hands over her face and started bawling again. <laughs> Being the gentleman that I am, I offered her my handkerchief. <laughs> well, at least she stopped crying. Then she told me that those two men wanted her, that she had to go with one of them, but she didn't want to go with either of them. But they were very, very mean men. They were crooks. They robbed banks. Their names were Barney and Quarry. She said if she was a man, she'd sock it to them like this, and this, and this. Oh. And I was glad she wasn't a man. She hired him out as a lady. Now, being the gentleman I am, I went over to those two robbers and asked them why they didn't pick on someone their own size. They said, 
mind your own business. I could see that they were scared now. So I picked one of them to settle the score with. I showed him I didn't have a gun, that I was ready to mind my own business. But the little girl started crying again, and I can't stand noise. Neither could they. One of them screamed, Stop that boy, or I'll shoot the bow right off your head. She shouted back, You can't hit the sound of a gun, much less my pretty bow. And she started crying again. I don't know why she was crying. I was the one being shot at. Then she started shouting, Kill him, Mr. Kill him! Kill him, Mr. Kill him! That was all I needed to hear. The voice of a nice little lady. Kill him, Mr. Kill him! I regained my courage, grew myself to my full height, and tried to remember the gun manual on 45s. Don't pull the trigger. Squeeze!
And one of these days, the head of the will go out of business. Arts today, featuring the art of the dancing ropes and the cracking bull whips. We're going to start off today with our very own cowboy Gavin Thompson. He's going to give you a quick rope demonstration here. So he's going to start off with what's called the flat spin. Next, he's going to move on to the cowboy's wedding ring. Switch off ropes on that one. A little bit bigger rope for that. Cowboys wedding ring. All right. And Gavin is going to finish up with the Oklahoma Skips. So if you all think jump roping is hard, we're going to get a load of this. Take one out of his arm. 
Phoenix. Now the fellow's going to need one more volunteer. This time that volunteer needs to be quite a bit older with nerves a bit steadier. And let the fellow's in the end. Well, this is an older volunteer, folks. An older volunteer. Looking for a grown up here. Uh, all right, we got one coming out. This volunteer is going to hold that piece of paper in her mouth. And I'm going to crack for the moment. Frank will attempt. Attempt, mind you, to cut that piece of paper right out of her mouth. You hold very still. Please make sure you keep your eyes tightly closed. Once again, the whip can kick up some dirt. We don't want you to get any dirt in your eyes. Just like Frank is about ready. He's on the line with crack number one. Don't move, don't flinch a muscle, whatever you do. Crack number two coming. One more, folks. Can Frank do it? And there you have it, folks. <laughs> Okay, folks, now to show you that the boys are on the level that they are, Alex is going to be holding a piece of paper in his mouth, and Frank will not put that piece of paper right down to Alex's nose. Silver and gold. But I'm talking about the mothers. 
the ones with that true pioneer spirit. Men are looking for freedom of expression. Take her for instance, for instance our own persistent undertaker. Mary and Dan, a fella devoted to his work. No matter what he's a doing, his mind's on Barry. And he's found that out here on the frontier, he can do free expression till he busts. And he may just do that someday. He's a nice fella. I don't want you to take me wrong, cause he ain't mean or anything like that. Just persistent. He's also the local barber. And that's why I can't advise you to go to him for a blood lesson. Anyways, most of the time he's undertaken. And he rents part of Doc Holliday's office so he can be right near the raw product. Here he comes now. Out of the barber shop. All dressed up in his berry and duds. He's a heading for Doc Holliday's office. That's him. Wild West City's answer to the population explosion. Barry and Dan, the persistent undertaker. Watch out for that thing he's a carrying. That's his tape measure. And as the saying goes, if you measure it by Barry and Dan, you're headed for the promised land. There he goes, just like a big beat bird, right into Doc Holliday's office. Looky, he's dragging out something. Big like a, yep, he's a dragging out a dang pine box. The undertaking kind. Let me see. I can't think of anyone dead around here. Hey, Dan. What? There ain't nobody what's dead. Well, look around. I mean that kind of dead. Sure, sure, it's a nice box. But every day you drag it out like a spider weaving a web. Taint like you was selling pots and pans. It ain't ethical. And I hear tell you've been spreading tales to gunslingers that our fine upstanding marshal is taking on all comers. Ain't you ashamed of yourself? You ain't. You should be. Cause there's a gunslinger up in the saloon right now telling everybody how he's gonna shoot down our fine upstanding marshal. Looks like a trip to Boone Hill's the same to you. No matter whether it's our fine upstanding marshal or some slithering gunslinger. Hey Dan, 
don't measure up <laughs> You busted all his up plum. You know this always makes him mad. And you already got his measurements. Very and damn, someday you're gonna stir up more trouble than you can handle. Look, Dan's jumping up and down, screaming. Now the cowboy's jumping up and down. Now a fine marshal's jumping up and down. some hidden crevice or behind some tree, a shot that would claim their lives and any valuable cargo they carried, and lay their human cargo open to all manner of outrages. And now, let us go back in time. Let your imagination create for you a setting in the early days of the western frontier. And you are on a stagecoach roaring across the plains, not too far from a town very much like Wild West City. Listen. You may be on the stage or waiting for a friend's arrival. The wheels rumble under you or in the distance. Yes, there is the coach approaching Wild West City now.
Something seems to be wrong. The driver's ripping up the tree. He seems to be trying to outrun something. He's trying to outrun the last man. Don't you know his back? <laughs> The outlaws overtake the coach, forcing the driver to a halt. Against such an odds, the driver has no choice. They order him to stand. They order him to hand down the gold. He complies. The passengers are ordered out of the coach with their hands above their heads and do as they are told. They are ordered to hand over all their money and valuables. One resists, he is shot. Satisfied that they have taken everything worth taking, the outlaws disappear as fast as they came. The driver and passengers are helpless. But the marshal is ridden out from town to meet the coach and sees they have met with disaster. He checks the wounded guard, but the guard is beyond help. The marshal asks the passengers for their names and what was stolen, and he tries to obtain a description of the outlaws. Girls be ready. The marshal will no doubt want a form of posse. Capture the bandits and recover the gold. Keep your eyes on the marshal. Come if he calls. Down to the marshal's office. Everybody down to the marshal's office. Yeah, that's the next.